Generative methods are the area in digital architecture where biology and computer science meet and, in their own way, fertilize each other. And so, it is no coincidence that at the very beginning of any discussion of generative methods, we are likely to find the father of evolutionary biology, Charles Darwin, who, as a contemporary of George Boole's, may already have been familiar with some of the logic that would underpin computing, but who, like Boole himself, would never get to see a computer in his lifetime. They both died in the 19th century, long before the first computer was built. Here, though, we want to introduce a man who very much was familiar with computers and who contributed to this field in a way that became immensely influential, even though he himself was not primarily interested in computer science. Aristide Lindenmeyer. Lindenmeyer was born in 1925 in Budapest, where he grew up and studied chemistry and biology, before moving to the United States to continue with studies in chemistry and botany, culminating in a thesis on plant physiology, for which he received his PhD from the University of Michigan in 1956. Twelve years later, in 1968, he returned to Europe, settling this time in the Netherlands, where he became a professor in philosophy and life sciences and biology at the University of Utrecht. And that same year, he published a paper entitled Mathematical Models for Cellular Interactions in Development, in which he introduced a string of interacting finite automata to model, as the title suggested, plant cell behaviour. The idea of interacting automata was not actually in itself entirely groundbreaking. John von Neumann, he of von Neumann architecture fame, who also happened to be born in Budapest, though 22 years earlier than Lindenmeyer, and Polish computer scientist Stanislaw Ulam had already proposed this in the early 1950s. But what Lindenmeyer brought new to the table was that these automata could multiply and in doing so simulate the process of cell division that we are familiar with from the natural world. Lindenmeyer continued developing the concept and refined it by replacing the automata with abstract symbols such as the letters of an alphabet. And this is what today we refer to as an L system. The English Wikipedia page on the subject defines it clearly and succinctly, and so we may as well quote it. Here it is. An L system consists of an alphabet of such symbols that can be used to make strings, a collection of production rules that expand each symbol into a larger string of symbols, an initial axiom string from which to begin construction, and a mechanism for translating the generated strings into geometric structures. End of and the L in L systems, of course, refers to our friend Aristide Lindenmeyer, which is why they are also known as Lindenmeyer systems. Lindenmeyer was really interested in the uses of these systems for botany, the analysis of developmental processes on the one hand and their simulation on the other. But very soon, in fact, since the early 1970s, computer science latched on to Lindenmeyer's work. The reason L systems are so important to computing is because they make it possible, in fact easy, to generate incredibly intricate and lifelike fractals and other organic patterns in a virtual setting, which is why they come into wide use in computer graphics generally, and especially in the generation of natural settings for computer games and computer-generated film sets. Interestingly, and Notwithstanding their great impact and the reams of research into them that have been published since their conception, it is not actually entirely clear or obvious what exactly an L system is. As Przemyslav Prusienkiewicz and Martin de Boer ask in their obituary of Lindenmeyer, published in the International Journal of General Systems, 
quote, Is it a mathematical theory limited to furnishing theorems deduced from a set of axioms? Or should it be viewed as a theory in biology, rooted in observations and amenable to empirical verification? End of quote. The answer, they note, and this again is in their own words, is not clear-cut. Lindenmeyer died in 1989, aged 63, and not all that much is really known about him. If you employ your favourite search engine, you will find that surprisingly few details about his life are readily available, and as far as we can tell, there is no published biography that extends beyond the basic details of his academic milestones. But these, and with them his overall contribution to computer science, and therefore by extension to architecture, are continually in use all around us. And so there is little danger of his falling into oblivion any time soon. When we and future generations think we are looking at nature on a screen or in a virtual reality scene, what we may in fact be looking at is the virtual representation of nothing other than a Lindenmeyer system.